the classic drinking bird effect. Note the blue liquid rising up the middle of the stem. The bird tips over, dips its beak in the water, which is quite important to the operation, and then swings back and starts rocking again because the blue liquid has settled down to the bottom of the globe. The blue liquid then rises back up the globe, affects the balance, and it will shortly tip back over and it will keep doing this. And you don't actually need the glass of water to be there at all because as long as the head is wet and there is a clue to the operation, it will work just fine. Let me demonstrate something else before we start taking a closer look at this. If I just grab it with my warm hand, it will just bubble continually. And that's why in the vicinity, on the bench, I've also got these bubble lamps and the tube out the bubble lamp. Because if I take this bubble lamp tube and I just uh, flick it down the way and I hold the base, can you see it bubbling? You can actually see little bubbles uh, of air. It's maybe not going to be so visible in camera, but you'll see a slight glitter. That uh, is the same effect. That's uh, the same sort of chemical that's used in this. So let's take a closer look at the rocky bird and see how it works. And here it is in readiness, assuming the position. Let's take the thing out of the little stand it comes with. Things worthy of note about the stand. It can rock in the stand, but there's also a little end cap here, a little end stop, should I say, that when you put it into the stand by bending the legs apart, when it tilts over, it can't go down below a certain point. This is just purely so it can always return to the, the correct level. The metal pivot can slide up and down. It's used for fine-tuning the balance. And it's also worth mentioning that it goes around a particular way so that the balance is biased to the, the actual, the pivot point is to the back. You could theoretically accidentally turn this round, and I'm not sure that would affect the operation. If it would make it, there's a risk that it could tilt, sort of try and tilt back the way instead of tilting forward, so it has to be round the right way. All useful things to know if yours stops working. So the Chinese describe this as the drinking lucky bird. I kind of, up until now, called it the rocky giraffe because, well, simply because when I was very, very young, I was given one as a present by my grandmother and it was giraffe styled with a sort of giraffe sort of nose and the ears out the top and the yellow liquid to match. That's one of the things you get a choice of liquid colour. You get red, yellow, green and blue and purple and things like that. But that's really, apart from the theming, uh, it, that's, that's more or less it. And this sort of feather that's stuck in the back. Do you know what would be quite good to see if uh, the trick with the isopropyl alcohol gets that off? One moment, please. Isopropyl alcohol. Rubbing alcohol. I've actually found a source in the Isle of Man. It's Jack Storrs. Uh, the Ramsey Warehouse in particular is where I got this one. That's useful to know because it's quite hard getting things that they're shipped out of man because they're terribly dangerous apparently. Well, they're fl flamble, so I'm going to put a wee drop in there. Maybe I should have put a bigger drop in there. Let's try and put an actual drip drop. Right, okay, we'll see what happens. We'll see if that is hot melt glue and we'll see if it comes off. It may do absolutely nothing whatsoever. I shall stick that cotton swab out the way. So uh, the idea about the hot melt glue thing with that, that, oh, well, look at that. It does work. It gets behind the hot melt glue and just basically dissolves and creeps behind it. This lets us see better what's here. The temptation is to try and get the hat off in the same way. I'm going to break this up. Oh, it's making cracking noises. I feel like I should continue. I have continued. I have broken the seal. I have killed the thing. It's got bubbles coming out the top. Excellent. So now we can really see how this works and I can take the beak off as well then. I don't think the beak's glass. I think the beak is probably just stuck in the front. The beak was stuck in the front, but the glass is so thin it's actually broken that as well. Excellent. Well, let's make sure I don't screw up in this video take because now, mmm, smell that solvent. So here is the principle which I can't really demonstrate too well now. Let's see what happens. I'll try and heat up the base. It's The liquid is rising, but it's not as enthusiastic as it was before because that's the secret of these bubble tubes, is the methylene chloride solvent. Uh, I'll lay this down gingerly now before I spill the solvent everywhere. The methylene chloride solvent, uh, you can raise it, you can lower the boiling point of it. It's already got a fairly low boiling point. It's fairly close to room temperature. But uh, you can lower it further by sealing it in a tube like this. 
drawing a vacuum and then sealing it off. And when you do that, it takes so little to boil it that that's the principle of these tubes. If I kind of shake this one down the way to actually get it started, hopefully this might do it. It depends how warm my hand is. My hands aren't that warm. There it goes. There's a few wee bubbles going up, but not really enough to put on a good show. But that's the principle of these sort of bubble tubes. There's a lamp underneath. There's some rock salt in the bottom to trap the liquid so it can't just... If, if you tried putting the tube in upside down, it wouldn't work because the liquid just continually flow. That's the principle of those cooling tubes, the heat tubes. But uh, because it's trapped in the liquid at the bottom, what happens is it, it boils because it can't just flow freely and then the gas escapes and that's what creates a continuous stream of bubbles. And the bubbles go to the top and then they recondense into liquid and it's just a continuously repeating cycle. The same applies to the Wurlitzer jukebox tubes, the original ones. If you watch the bubbles going up the side of the tube, you'll see they actually get smaller as they get to the top because they're recondensing as they cool. Those things are a closed loop. They're sealed glass tubes with this solvent in them. In this case, it relies on the fact that the top is cooler than the bottom because the top is covered in this flock and it's clear from the pattern here that they've just basic, once it's been finished making the tube, they've dipped the head in glue and they've a sort of very runny glue and then they've dipped it in or sprayed it with the flocking material to actually create that sort of moisture absorbing texture on it this is this is still wet from that water that's why when you've dipped the head in water i mean even if you don't have a glass to actually use this with you can run it under the tap and it makes this uh, wicking material wet and it will run for literally hours just until that fully dries because as the water evaporates off this it because it's liquid changing to a gas you get a temperature change it actually lowers the temperature and because the temperature difference of the vapour is really what, what makes this work, uh, that's what pulls the liquid up. And when the thing actually tips over to drink, it doesn't have to do anything really, because when it tips over, what actually happens is that liquid, then the liquid flows into here, you get the vapour uh, the sort of higher pressure vapour runs up the inside, it escapes into the top and it causes an equilibrium of pressure and that basically resets it and the liquid goes back to the bottom and that cycle repeats. And this is a good demonstration of refrigeration as well because if I uh, get the notepad in, the notepad with uh, doodles of a little design I was playing about with that has been completely uh, superseded. Let's uh, focus down there, let's tame it down a bit superseded because I discovered uh, components on eBay, all the components you could possibly desire on eBay that made that particular design a lot simpler, but that is for another day. So here's the principle of uh, evaporation and cond condensing of liquid. Let's take the lock exposure off. If you have a compressor, compressor, and you basically have a tube going from the output to the input of that compressor and halfway along that tube you put a restrictor that just allows a tiny amount to flow. It's called literally an orifice. It's a disc with a tiny hole in it. Same is used for uh, atomizing fuel and stuff like that and burners. The compressor, if you have a refrigerant in here, you have say for instance the refrigerant in its liquid state in here and the compressor uh, pressurizes this side, but it pulls a vacuum on this side. The liquid sprays through this orifice, and it's spraying through the orifice very slowly, and it's going into a low-pressure side. And when it does that, because it's above the effect of the boiling point of the solvent, the the pressure causes that. It turns into a vapor. And because the liquid's turning into a vapor, this side gets very cold. It gets, uh, what's the best way? I'll draw little stars like ice. And the vapour then gets compressed by the compressor, and when it's pushed into this side again, it recondenses. And when it recondenses, it's changing from the gas to the liquid again because the pressure's changing, and that's where you get the heat given back off again. That's the, uh, should I say, that's, yeah, that's the uh, condensing, and that's the bit of the refrigerator that'll be uh, hot. This is the evaporator. Did I say that wrong earlier on? I keep I always mix them up. That's, you couldn't tell I worked for Hussman, did you? A refrigeration company for a considerable length of time as well. But uh, the 
To make this more efficient, they basically snake this pipe. This is the what you'll see at the back of your fridge. And that's the bit where it's uh, evaporating, going from the liquid in, into the gas and taking all the heat from the food in the fridge. And then when it comes out the other side, it goes through the condenser, which is another zigzaggy one. Then there's a, usually this little sort of receiver uh, for that to catch the liquid and store it and sort of give a balance of vapour and liquid. And that's where all the heat comes back off. And likewise with... Uh, the same principle is used for uh, air conditioners or heat pumps. In the case of an air conditioner, this would be the the fan would be blowing across this this sort of fan here with the motor, and it would be having the cooling effect of cooling the air in the room and taking the heat outside where it dissipates it outside. And likewise, if you can, if you're lucky enough to have one that can be reversed, uh, or you just have a dedicated heat pump, it could, the thing could be reversed and you could have the fan uh, indoors here blowing hot air into the house and taking cold from the air outside. It's an efficient way of providing heat. Other applications this sort of system is used? Um, dehumidification, where the air blows across the cooling plates first and the because the moisture can only hold so much, uh, the air can hold, only hold so much moisture depending on temperature, because it's being so cooled, the water condenses onto these pipes and that's why your fridge is always sort of wet at the back on those plates and then it drips down into the sort of reservoir and it passes over that and then the air passes over and gets reheated again by the uh, if, uh, condenser coil before it gets blown out the front of the unit again so it doesn't cool the air in the room. It's a closed loop, if anything, the way it will be slightly warm coming out that. So that's a, a sudden diversion. This was starting off about these rocky birds and uh, somehow managed to get in the the uh, the bubble lamps, the classic American bubble lamp made by Noma. Not really popular in the UK for some reason. Uh, the usual fears about uh, methylene chloride is a possible carcinogen, just like every other chemical. And also, the worst thing that can happen if these things break is they are quite an aggressive solvent for plastics. They'll leave stains and things. It's also worth mentioning the little beak. Is that a glass beak in there? Or is it plastic? Certainly in my rocky giraffe, it was plastic. I think that may actually possibly be glass, but I'm not really sure. Let's scrape it with a sharp blade and see what it sounds like. Noting that there is broken glass in the back of this now. Well, I, I'm getting glue. I'm getting glue. And plastic, that is plastic, that they've glued onto the glass... Uh, side of the glass, and the uh, my rocky giraffe, I burst it, I took it to bits. That's probably not much of a surprise. Let's brighten this image up and focus back down to about there. Um, I took my rocky giraffe to bits and kind of broke it because in doing so, I pulled it sort of, the nose was just on a little glass pip. It was just pressed on. And I pulled it off and didn't realise that the important uh, thing that I destroyed there was the continuity of the wicking material that... The, beak that dips into the water must wick the liquid onto this uh, back area because it's this large area here cooling that cools the globe that pulls the solvent up. So uh, if you have one of these or an old one and it stops wicking in that way, if you can somehow bridge that or maybe even reflock it with a bit more glue and more flock to get that moisture path onto that, that's what will fix it. The other things you can do with these, the thing I was going to do with this was stick an LED at the bottom and... Uh, put a resistor on uh, so that it heated it up and then it just created a bubble tube. But, well, I don't think that's going to happen now because uh, methylene chloride, no matter how I try and seal this up, the only way I could really seal it now is to heat the tube, which is always a bit a bit of an experience with this solvent because it does get boiling very quickly. Um, and then I could try and seal the glass off. But, but the other, there's no other way I could block it that this just wouldn't sort of dissolve and leak. It's very, it's very prone to just uh, escaping. Oh, there's one of the, the bird's eyes has come off as well. Well, I'm doing really well. I've destroyed everything. Excellent. Just the usual then. So uh, that's it. They're cheap. They're only about three or four, maybe say five dollars is your sort of rough target price. I shall put a link down in the description so we can go and buy one of these yourself and just marvel at the scientific uh, possibilities. And... Uh, there we go, that's it. The hat in the top is largely to hide the ceiling pip in the top. There we go, that's interesting. 
fun. I've broken it, but that doesn't matter. Destroying my things so you don't have to. Hard to say what solvent that is. Let's light it and see if noxious fumes come off. Oh yeah, did you see the... Yeah, that was uh, definitely uh, going smoky when the flame came close to that. Yeah, I'd say that's... Uh, it's not really... It's not... Oh, there it goes. Uh, yeah, it's combustible anyway. It does seem flammable. Um, oh yeah, and the fumes are stinking, so therefore probably very toxic. Okay, excellent. It is a completely flammable and exciting solvent. And as an extra party trick, it can actually dissolve its own base if the solvent escapes. So that's a very neat trick indeed. Definitely watch you don't break one of these or use it on a surface that you value greatly if it's susceptible to attacking by solvents. So I'm guessing this probably is something like methylene chloride then.